Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Manage the Wild Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. Today, I was thinking about some different things. I was actually on Instagram, and I came across uh, a couple of scenarios that I actually happened in wildlife. And it was a guy who was searching for water, and he was using two wires, and he was using what they call dowsing rods, and he was looking for water. And when the dowsing rods cross, that is supposed to be exactly where water is. The reason why this came up in wildlife, it's just nuts. So dowsing rods uh, first popped up in around the 1500s. People used to use them to find water, find uh, different uh, metals, whether it was uh, silver or gold, they were looking for gemstones. You could basically find anything. And it's just uh, a thing that can't be scientifically proven, but people believe in it. Uh, You can use a branch that looks like a Y, or you can use these uh, metal wires bent in an L, and when they cross, um, that is where the stuff is supposed to be. Now, people don't really know how it works, but there was this guy on Instagram who was using it to find water. He was um, laying some pipe and he wanted to know where the water was. So he walked around until they crossed. How's this apply to wildlife? So a gentleman had some elk and mule deer getting into his haystacks. It was winter. He was experiencing a bunch of damage and he wanted us to come out and put some netting up to help reduce his damage. He was by himself. And so he wanted some help. My boss called me and I met him out there. We went out there and we went to put up the net and there was this gentleman walking around. Sorry, let me get my, my, dowsing rods he walked around in circles and we're like what in the world and we sat in the truck and we watched him for a minute and sure enough boom dowsing rods crossed and it turns out he drilled wells and that was how he went about finding where to drill and he swore by it i i'm not making fun of it it just seems odd um but he swore by it and said for sure that this is where water was Not going to say he's right or wrong. I do have a grandpa who's got dementia and Alzheimer's, and he's a little bit nuts. And he wants to know why he's not allowed to go dowsing on people's property at midnight and why they call the cops. So that's my experience with dowsing. We all have that one family member. So. Uh, we started to hang up the net and he come over and started talking to us and said, Hey, uh, you know, there's elk and deer around here. And we said, well, obviously you call this cause you're getting damage and there's damage to your haystack. He goes, Nope, I'm going to tell you exactly where they are. And I he proceeded to walk in a circle and his wires are going all directions until he gets, and he's facing basically West. Yeah, and then they cross. And I was like, holy cow, if you kept driving all the way through Nevada to California, you were going to hit some elk sometime. I believe in dowsing rods. He wasn't impressed. We proceeded to continue to hang up the netting, but he didn't find my tone very funny. But this is one of the reasons why I love working with wildlife. You get the craziest stories. Like, just nuttiest stories, things that you would never come up with. People raise deer, and they ride, they put their kids on the back of the deer, and they let them hold on to the antlers, and, like, you're waiting for these kids to get gore. Or people will take in skunks or um, rattlesnakes or or whatever as pets and raccoons um, that have possibility of the plague. Like, they do all these weird things. And this is why I love wildlife, is because... You catch all these stories. Not too long ago, I was reading a book, and the book was talking about sales. Now, what do sales have to do with wildlife? Everything. Because everything you do is a sale. You are trying to sell something constantly. I don't care if you're a teacher and you're teaching math. You're trying to sell the idea to these kids that they need to learn this because it's going to be beneficial to them. If you're a child talking to a parent, you need them to understand why they need to buy you a $600 PS5 
even though you're already on the screen too much. You're trying to sell that idea. In wildlife, we're trying to sell the idea of managing wildlife in a certain way, using science to back up these ideas. And we're trying to get the public to go along with whatever we're doing. You're always selling something. I was reading this book, and in this book, it talked about the importance of collecting stories. That's why I write these stories down. And that's why I do this podcast, to help me remember these stories. The dowsing rods and the uh, ibis, uh, 60, 70 ibis getting killed by a semi-truck. These are all interesting things that have happened to me. And this is why I continue to want to work with wildlife, even though it doesn't pay. You guys have a great day. Collect a story.